So for every good step Microsoft make with Xbox, it seemingly takes two steps back and somehow disappoints its player base week after week, month after month, yes, year after year. If it was only game delays, it wouldn't be so bad after all. It's the best thing to delay a game and make it great rather than put it out there in a cyberpunk-like state. But Microsoft isn't a indie studio like CD Projekt Red is. No, Microsoft are a huge corporation with money and resources that eclipse every video game platform holder on the planet. So how is it? How is it then? Microsoft just cannot seem to manage its numerous studios, workflows and teams. There's no point saying Xbox only just acquired a bunch of studios. That's a pretty weak argument. Microsoft have been in the video game business over 20 years. It has had this problem ever since ex-Xbox boss Don Matrick unceremoniously was ousted from the company or left the company whichever way following the botched Xbox One launch which had forced DRM onto its users, something we still have in Xbox Series X, and Microsoft got distracted by media functionality instead of focusing on games and that ridiculously expensive price point for what was on offer. I would argue Xbox has had studio management issues dating back more than five or six years. Incidentally, when Phil Spencer took over and head of Xbox Studios, Matt Booty was appointed. So who's to blame? Phil Spencer? Matt Booty? Well, I ran a Twitter poll following the news of Microsoft's biggest 2022 titles delayed until 2023, and an overwhelming 70% of the vote blamed Matt Booty. The reality is the buck stops at Phil Spencer, who is in charge of all Xbox and Windows gaming and the man who actually appointed Matt Booty. So now we are left with a similar scenario to last year and the year before that and the year be you get where this is going, right? Xbox has no first party produced AAA game to show off. The power of his Xbox Series X S, never mind power your dreams, wait till next year because there's nothing to dream about in 2022. Bear in mind we are long ways off from 2023 in terms of the fast moving landscape of gaming. So after a five day, yes, five day for some six day Xbox Live outage, Microsoft decided to drop even more bad news to its player base. The two biggest Xbox games of this year, Redfall and Starfield, are now delayed until 2023. Here's a Bethesda and Xbox statement. We made the decision to delay the launches of Redfall and Starfield to the first half of 2023. The teams at Arcane Austin, makers of Redfall, and Bethesda Game Studios, makers of Starfield, have incredible ambitions for their games, and we want to ensure that you receive the best, most polished versions of them. We want to thank everyone from the excitement for Redfall and Starfield, and that energy is a huge part of what inspires all of us every day and drives our own excitement for what we are creating. We can't wait to show and share our first deep dive into the gameplay for both Redfall and Starfield soon. Thank you for your support. Interestingly, part-time IGN staffer and full-time Xbox mascot, Destin Legary, wisely decided to take leave and went on a break from reporting on his YouTube channel at conveniently just the right time. Well, just as well as there would have been way too much smoke. <laughs> now, Ryan McCaffrey, host of the excellent IGN Unlocked podcast, is the only Xbox media guy I respect. At least McCaffrey calls out Xbox when it's needed. Do you realize Xbox slash Bethesda has released more 2022 first party titles, namely Ghostwire Tokyo and Deathloop on PS5 than on its own Xbox Series X and S platform? That's insane. If I was to write a Dear John letter to Xbox, you know, a breakup letter, it would go a little something like this. Dear Xbox, it feels like we're just going round in circles and ending up right where we started, where we went wrong. I just, 
I just feel you were never truly there for me. You have, you've got commitment issues and I'm just so tired of all the broken promises. I hope whoever you're with next, you treat them better than you treated me. All I got from this, whatever this is, was excuses and lonely nights. It's over Xbox Series X and for good this time. I want out of this relationship. Please don't contact me. I'm sorry. P.S. Still have your shit in storage. <laughs> As you could probably tell, I have an acute case of deep buyer's remorse. I'm making a public appeal to those Xbox users, particularly the diehard users. Stop trying to defend the indefensible. Xbox hasn't released anything decent in seven months since Forza Horizon 5, a great title by the way, and the disappointing Halo Infinite, which I actually enjoyed the campaign mode, but multiplayer not so hot, very slow to roll things out. I'd go as far as to say that 3-4 Industries killed Halo, slaughtered it. And Game Pass, well Game Pass, what can you say about Game Pass? It relies on a steady flow of games releasing. Those big hitters, day and one, you know, day, day and date. Game Pass gets more lower tier titles than anything else. And the AAA releases on the subscriptions are far and few in between. At present, Xbox is only good for playing back compact titles from a time long ago, long, long ago, when it actually had great games. And offering features, yeah, VRR, ALLM, all this stuff, 1440p, and yet more Xbox controllers. Am I lying? Xbox Series X and S is doing far worse than the Xbox One's first 18 months to two years in terms of content. Say what you want regarding Xbox One's launch, at least the platform had five or six console exclusives in a comparative time frame. Rise Son of Rome, Dead Rising 3, Forza Motorsport 5, Forza Horizon 2, Killer Instinct, Halo Master Chief Collection, all launched within two years of that platform. So Redfall and Starfield are delayed. And there is yet again no AAA game replacement for Xbox Series X or S this holiday, just like when the console launched. And people wonder why I'm so pissed at Xbox. Let me tell you, this is my final Xbox generation. I am done with Xbox. Like I said, it's going to be a retro box after this generation. I am not buying anything new for Xbox. That aside, and rather ironically, the Xbox fan base could be applauded for having the fortitude and tenacity to continue to white knight for this company who consistently disappoints them. If there's one thing Microsoft is consistent at, it's disappointing people. The biggest console platform holder in the world, the most money, the most resources, and it just cannot deliver the games. Microsoft's problem is it has no contingency plan for the games it delays. No replacement game release, nothing. Just Xbox farmed cold turkey. I even notice on social media, people willing, hoping, wishing on a star field that God of War Ragnarok or Forspoken on PS5 is delayed into 2023. <laughs> what about isms? I wonder why these salty people, obviously non-PS5 users, hope that God of War Ragnarok will be delayed on PS5. Hmm, what possible reason, what possible nefarious motive could there be for wanting such a thing? Let me think. Even if Sony delays some games and reschedules to 2023, God of War Ragnarok may well be one of them, who knows? At least Sony Interactive Entertainment released first party PS5 games in 2022. Remember the narrative coming from Xbox-centric YouTubers who I shall not name? Confirmed, Starfield, it's not coming to PS5. It's a 2022 Xbox exclusive. Ha ha ha! Well, these people can pretend the delay was expected after the fact, but Xbox gamers were oblivious, totally oblivious to the possibility that they too wouldn't be getting Starfield in 2022 either. <laughs> oh cold, oh cold. Why didn't I just upgrade my gaming PC? I'm just a terribly flawed and gullible human being. 
I fell for a Microsoft hook, line and sinker yet again. Now you can take this video any way you like, though I will leave you with this. I gave Xbox multiple chances over the years since it botched Xbox One. You know, I gave them chance after chance. I was even batting for Xbox sometimes, you know, t telling off Sony fans, PlayStation fans for, for shitting on everything Xbox. I was on Twitter. I was that guy trying to be, you know, giving Xbox a chance. I really was. You can check my history on Twitter. Check my timeline. I gave Xbox multiple chances over the years, over the generations, rocking with the brand since, you know, tw you know, uh, 2002s, I guess. That's when it released in the UK. 2002's OG Xbox, the original Xbox One. And I've purchased, I have purchased every Xbox generation to date. But I am truly done after this one. According to Google Translate, the Spanish translation of L Xbox is actually L Xbox, as in hold this L. Languages are easy to learn and super advantageous. Now look, I'll end this video on this. I am in no way anti Xbox, but I am anti bullshit. Though what say you? Let's continue the discussion, cause you in the comments. Go ahead, sound off, show your thoughts and opinion on today's news as that brings us to the end of the video. Subscribe for more gaming news, rumor and speculation. Hit the like button and yes, hit the notification bell so we don't miss each other. And you can help Foxy Games UK reach more gamers so feel free to share the video. And you may also want to consider supporting Foxy Games UK via Patreon because, well, we're like family now. So thank you. You can find a link in the video description, but that concludes our time together today. Thanks for hanging out with me on this Friday. Until next time. Play games, not corporations. Well, play games if you can, if they release them. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. I'm out.